Hi there guys, um, here in Jeffreys Bay we've got a few little places where you can actually take your, your, your tackle that you normally use for drop shot fishing like 11 foot rod, the 20-25 pound braid and you can actually go and fish for decent fish like raggies up to up to 100 kilos if you're lucky and um, up, you, you need to downsize your bait a little bit but you still need your bait big enough and attractive enough for just in case that bigger fish pops around. So I'm just quickly going to run through the type of trace I'll use and then make you guys an example of a typical mullet bait that I'll throw at paradise for those little raggies on the light tackle. Right, now the basic trace that I'll use is, um, like I say, your bait can't be too big because you need to cast it on an 11 foot rod with a 3 ounce weight. So I usually use a, a Berkeley Fusion hook in the, in the 8 o size. So it's, it's big enough that you can land a big fish on it, but it's sharp and small enough to, um, to balance out nicely with the size baits we're going to use. Okay, and then the basic setup is, yeah, I, I like to use, even though we're going to fish fairly light, I still like to use 120 pound steel, carbon coated in this case, because even though you're fishing light, you, you, you might still hook a decent sized fish and you don't want to be underdone there. I tie this onto one more fluorocarbon, Fluorocarbon is nice and tough in the rocks and it gives you that little bit of finesse um, fishing with a lighter gear. Hi guy, for this bait we're just going to use um, some yellowtail cutlets just for extra bit of smell. We all know raggies love yellowtail. And I've got a frozen local J Bay mullet here and uh, I'll just show you guys a quick example of how I'd rig it on the light tackle outfit. Right, to start off with, what I like to do this so will grab the mullet and I just tear. Kill cover. Kill cover. And I'll take my knife. And just in front of the eyes, I'll just cut it off. Alright, so I've got a little wire dingle here. And now I'm just going to measure the size of, of, of the chunk that I need. And I'll just cut it off straight. Your next step you just start um, shaping it. You're fishing with a light tackle so you want to keep your bait nice and aerodynamic. It'll help, help you a little bit with the casting. And now I take all the skin off and the two, two side fins. Right, so the next step is you use your dingle tool. Just make sure that you come out as close to the center as possible. There we go. Okay, so that's in place. My next step, I'll just put the hook in. Now you take your mullet. Take off two little fillet sections, about the same size as your head. There's one. These two, and I cut out the gut section as well. Right now, I like to skin the mullet. Just insert your knife, go down to the skin. Grab that size and just slice through. You want to go as close to the skin as possible, very important. Same again, down to the skin, grip and just slice along. 
And once you freeze a mullet, it's as if all the oil gets pulled towards the skin. I always put this to the outside just to increase the oil slick and the smell around my bay. Chock hammer, just a few taps, very important, just to release all those oils. That's more than enough. And then the guts, a few taps as well. Right, now we're going to finish off this bait. One fillet. You don't have to put too much cotton on the first one because as you tie on the other bits and pieces, that piece will obviously get more cotton on as well. Other one on the other side. Guts on top. Well, the, this, this bait is basically finished. Um, you can use it as it is now, but what I like to do is just add a little slither of yellow tail. It just gives me an extra bit of confidence, but that's up to you. As you can see, it's very thinly sliced. Put it at the back of your bait. Right guys, now to finish it off, remember your hook is not in the bait at all, the hook's just in your dangle. So what I like to do is I like to finish it off with lots of winds this way around. So you're actually tying the bait to the hook and not just the bait to the dangle. So I'll give it about 20 winds that way around, pull out my fingers, turn it around and now I'll just make sure I lock that cotton together so it can't jump off the bait on top. So about 20, 30 winds. Just go down to the bottom once more. And there we go. As you can see, it's quite a smallish bait. It's nice and aerodynamic. So you can throw it with, a, with an ultra light gear. It won't be a problem. But all the goodness that I've got in there is basically a whole big mullet that's been concentrated into a bait that size. So very effective bait when you fish the light tackle for for young raggies. Down here at Pike Valley, and the uh, tide is still fairly low. We now we'll take a chance and see. I had a bite, my first throw, took the bait off, and instead of tackling up and throwing with a heavy tackle again, I took a chance with a pea shooter here. So we're on the 20 pound fire line and the 5,500 spin fisher, eh? and it's shallow. The reefs are really shallow here at the moment, so Let's see how it goes. So, so, so.
harmonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound, impossible to obtain in a monoro recording. Like I'm getting lucky, eh? I didn't touch a reef once, and the water's only about three to four foot deep. We're fishing at the moment, so I've got luck on my side. Not a bad little reggae. You just feel so bulletproof even fishing with light tackle like this and it's such a jaw. So, um, I see the fish is tagged so we'll get the particulars and the tag number. We won't take the tag out. Measure her. He's a female and we'd let's just get her back as quickly as possible. Okay guys if you're gonna do a, 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 a tagged fish just make sure your measurements are accurate. So, Usually when we fish socially, we just measure over the back. I'm going to use two pegs and measure it as accurately as possible. I'm going to double check if he's a female. Seaweed snookering me a little bit here, but I've got it at 139, 139 centimeters. We've got the tag number, we've got an accurate measurement, it's a female. I'll just make sure the fish goes back. release on a tagged fish so I'm quite interested to see who caught the fish where it was caught how much has grown how many days it's been free so that's a lack of result I'm chuffed